Shalom, shalom. How are you sisters doing this Sabbath day? Brothers, how are y'all doing this Sabbath? All praises, we say shalom to all and to the brothers and sisters online. We say shalom. Uh, today we're going to go over a topic, understanding the Christian faith. We're going to understand the Christian faith. I want to open up um, with the uh, article of Celestia. There's uh, from the Christian Apologetics. From the Christian Apologetics. Yes. Blow that up big. Who's reading for me today? All of a sudden, that's your mind? Okay. All right. So this is from the Christian Apologetics uh, website. They are discussing something they term legalism. Now, I want to go down to the, th- I think it's the third paragraph. Go down to the third paragraph. We actually start at the second paragraph. Start right there, all of a sudden, that's your mind. Start right there. Listen very good to their explanation of legalism. Legalism is do-it-yourself religion, a sprawling system with countless permutations, all sharing one core belief, self-effort saves. This is the natural religion of the flesh. So in other words, it's saying don't keep the commandments. Go ahead. The selfish, sensual seat of sin in all fallen human that enslaves them to evil. Romans 6.15, verse 23, 7 and 8, 11, 25, 8, 7 through 8. Confident of their ability to impress God and gain heaven, legalists believe that complying with holy codes of conduct and carrying out sacred ceremonies will end up convincing God on judgment day. Mm, Really? Okay. So these people are wicked as hell. Now watch the next paragraph. Watch how stupid they are. Legalism goes as far back as Cain, who believed that God was obligated to accept the fruit of his labor. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 through 8. This man of the flesh and father of legalism sincerely assumed that he could please God by his own effort. When God rejected his offering, however, Cain's thin veneer of piety disintegrated. His religious acts could neither atone for his sins nor change his proud, angry, murderous heart. From Cain, the first legalist, we learned that human religion is a powerless sham. Now notice to explain legalism, they go to Cain's example. That's how stupid and evil these people are. Let's go to that chapter they're talking about. Genesis chapter 4. And let's look at verse 3 and 4. And let's see what God accepted and didn't accept. So they explain legalism. Trying to keep the commandments is evil, wicked, and they give the example of Cain. Wow, go ahead. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So you notice, see, this is how they try to be slick. They said we can't use Abel as an example because we'll cut ourselves. But let's use Cain. People are that stupid. They'll follow what we're saying. So beware of these these Christian apologetics. Be very leery. Now, I want to go to my best friend in the world, T.D. Jakes. I just love this brother. We're just going to look at the first five minutes. It's the first five minutes of him. We're going to go from zero to uh, five minutes. Over to Alicia. All right. Got some things I want to share tonight that I believe will be a blessing to you. I want to spend a few moments just kind of setting the stage. Uh, I'm going to go to Galatians chapter 4, and we'll be working on verse 19. I hope to get through 31. I don't know if I'll get that far or not, uh, because I need to set the text in context. The text in context. Paul is writing to the church in Galatia because he is dealing with the problem that exists in the first century church. And that problem was this. 
Jesus gave his life on the cross. He shed his blood for the sins of mankind. He, he died for our sins and then rose for our justification that we might walk in the newness of life and instituted this new entity, this new holy thing that we call the church. That's what he did for us. And he, when he gave us the church, let me make sure that, that you're getting this because this is going to be good. When he gave us the church, he, he, uh, he didn't explain it. He didn't define it. He didn't organize it. He just released it into the hands of the apostles. And so the first century church was really trying to get their arms around it. They knew that they had been washed in the blood. They knew of the efficacious power of the blood of Jesus Christ. They knew that they'd been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. But that atonement and that empowerment is not enough if you don't have alignment and structure. And there were some rifts amongst the early church disciples as to how much of, of our Judaistic tradition do we bring over into our New Testament theology? Uh, should we continue to circumcise? Should we continue to honor certain feast of weeks and feast of unleavened bread? Should we uh, keep the Sabbath? Should we do this or that or the other? So and that's there was what we're going to deal much with debate today. about it. Okay. It's particularly now. It wasn't a problem as long as they were. There were primarily Jews that were being converted to Christianity because mm -hmm. they they had already been circumcised. Their traditions were already there. But when they started taking in these Gentiles, it was kind of controversial because the Gentiles were not. They had no roots. They had no background. They had no tradition. They had no religiosity. They had no faith. And so, do we go back and teach them the law? and integrate the law into the grace of God, uh, or, or, or is the grace of God sufficient enough uh, that they don't have to do everything that our ancestors did in order to approach God? And there was some discussion about that. They kept meeting in Jerusalem and, and talking about it. In fact, at one point, uh, it went beyond talking. It, 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 it almost got into a fisticus. It, it was just a, a great frustration. It's called the Antioch incident where they begin to battle and to wrestle about this issue. Uh, Paul in particular confronts Peter. Uh, uh, Sometimes when you take your leisure, you can read about it. Uh, in, in Galatians 2, uh, 9 through 16, there's some very, very, very interesting things uh, about how, how tough it got. Uh, it says in verse 11, for example, but when Peter came to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that, certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. In other words, he's accusing Peter of being two-faced, that when the Jews weren't around, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when the Jews, when the converted Jews came around, he would not eat with the Gentiles. And so Paul confronts him to his face, and they, they're really battling about uh, the Gentiles. And if you study the word of God deep enough, you'll come to find out that, that more and more Christianity began to appeal more and more to the Gentiles and less and less to the Jews. Then there is, as it were, I'll use the same word, a circumcision, a cutting back away uh, from, from Judaism, embracing Christianity. And the Gentiles actually begin to embrace the faith more readily. Hence, you have like the book of Romans and you have this uh, First Corinthians and Second Corinthians as they labor in Rome to convert uh, in Corinth and in Rome to convert them uh, to understanding Christianity. And there were all types of people there. There were some Jews, there were uh, Gnosticism, there was a lot of different religions there. But they had the job of kind of scrubbing out where they came from and get. Well, alrighty then. So he said a whole lot of nothing. I'm going to explain to you. So in other words, don't we ain't got to keep the commandments. That's number one. We're going to deal with that point number one. Do we have to keep the law? Do we have to keep the commandments? Point two, who are the Gentiles? That's the world's confusion. I'm two points right there. Point one, do we have to keep the law? Point two, who are the Gentiles Paul addressed? Now, they like to throw the word Christianity in there. The word Christianity is not found in the Bible. Christianity, this is what I'm saying. The word Christianity is not in the Bible. The word Christian is in the Bible only three times. Now, what we want to do 
Let's look, hey, uh, Officer Alicia, I sent you the etymology of the word Christian. It should be right under, is that it? All right, can we blow it up big so we can take a look at it? Uh, start at the very top. Make it bigger so everybody at home can see it. All I want is the very top, uh, Officer Alicia. Right there. Blow it up big. Come to the Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can shrink that just a little. Yeah, right there. Read this. The name Christian summary, meaning of the, ano of the anointment, of the anointed. The, the word Christian means anointed. It does not mean follower of Christ. I keep hearing the stupidest things. People, Christian means follower of Christ. When you go to Merriam's Dictionary, it says Christian, follower of Christ. That doesn't, that's not the mean, that's not the etymology of the word. The etymology of the word Christian or Christ is anointed. Okay. Now read an etymology from the noun. Etymology from the noun, which means Christos, anointed or sovereign from the verb creo to anoint. That's what Christ means, anoint. Okay. So it does not mean, Christian does not mean follower of Christ. That's a lie. It's anoint or anointed. That's what it's talking about. So when they called the disciples Christians in Antioch, they said these are the anointed. That's what they were saying. And that's the same word uh, as uh, Messiah. The word Messiah is Hebrew for anointed. Christian or Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, which means anointed. The Hebrew form Messiah, which also means anointed. Everybody understand? Everybody with me? Write that down. Might be on a test one day. You never know. You see on the testimony, Christ means Christian means follower of Christ. Wrong. All right. All right. The word I said the word Christian is three times in the Bible, right? So what we're going to do before we get to that, I want to start with Christ Himself, the Anointed Himself, because if you notice what Christians tend to do when they don't want to keep the law. Who's the first person they run to? Paul, always. They, they say, right, let's start with Christ. He's the Savior. He's the anointed. He's the Messiah. Ah, ah, we don't want it. We want to go. Watch this. Give me Matthew chapter 19. Let's start at verse 16. This is what the apologetics despise. This is what all Christendom despises. And it's, I'm going to show you the origin of that goes back to Roman Catholicism. Read Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? What good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? What do I have? Do I have to do anything? Remember, Christians say you don't have to do nothing. Just believe. You got some Israelites that say just speak Hebrew. Say the name. Hamashiach, Yahawashah, Hamashupalaba. Shalayam, Shalamayam the hell is this? That's all you got to do. Read on. Verse 17. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. That's why Christian studies said that we don't want the Gospels with Christ speaking. We want, let's go to Romans 6 or Galatians 3. Where they, where it's, hard, it's hard to be written. It's hard, it's hard to be understood. So they go and they say, most people don't study Paul, so we can bedazzle you with our foolishness. Now let's keep reading. Verse 18. He saith unto him, which, Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt do no murder. Now where did Christ get that from? The Old Testament. Give me that. Let's get the precept. Exodus twenty thirteen. Let's get that. And right, they say, they, the apologetics like to say um, that they are defenders of the gospel. No, apologetics, what they truly are, are defenders of white supremacy. That's what they are. Come on. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. That's where Christ got that first thing from. Just keep your hand right there, Netshamai. We're going right back there. Read verse Matthew 19, verse 18 again. Verse 18. He saith unto him, which... Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, 
Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Go back to verse 14 in Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Hmm. Go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 20, verse 18. He saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Let's go back to Exodus 20 now, verse 15. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. That's going back to Matthew now. Matthew chapter 20, verse 18. He Matthew 19 and verse Matthew 18. 19, verse 18. Mm -hmm. He saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Let's go on back to Exodus 20, verse 16. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So what Christ is doing is going back to the law and showing and teaching us these are some of the things we have to do to gain eternal life. Back to Matthew 19, and we're in verse 19 now. Matthew chapter 19, verse 19. Honor thy father and thy mother. Oh, let's go back to Exodus 20 and verse 12. Where do you get that from? Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord, give, the Lord God giveth thee. Let's go on back now. Matthew 19, verse 19 again. Matthew chapter 19, verse 19. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, now it goes to Leviticus. Let's get that one. Leviticus 19, verse 18. So Christ is quoting the law to the young man who asks, what, does he, what good thing does he have to do to gain eternal life? And the same is true, was true for him as it is for us today. Read. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Notice the, your neighbor is the children of your people. It's not the Greco-Roman Empire. It's not the Chinese. It's not the Japanese. It's the children of your people. What was Christ teaching with that one? Solidarity. Unity amongst the race. Let's go on back now. Verse 21, Matthew 19, verse 21. Matthew chapter nope, 19. 20, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 19, verse 20. The young man saith unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? So the young man said, I did all. I've been doing this since I was born. What else do I lack? Right, right. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect. If you will be perfect. Uh-huh. Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, and come and follow me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. Give me that in Deuteronomy 15, 7. This is what he's basing it on. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7. If there be any, if they be... If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren, one of thy brethren, go ahead, within any of thy gates mm -hmm. in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. Was that it? That's it okay. Verse seven. Going back, read it again. Matthew 19, verse 21 again. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Jesus saith, said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. So now stop. I want to show you an example of that. Go to, uh, I think it's Acts chapter is it 4, yeah, 4 and 31, something like that. I didn't write it down, but it just popped into my head. Acts chapter 4, verse 34. Okay. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought Brought the prices of the things that were sold. And Read. laid, verse 35, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So that's what Christ was telling him to do. Okay, he wasn't saying give up everything you have and be homeless. 
The man had abundance. As we go back to Matthew 19, it's going to say that. Back to Matthew 19, please. Matthew chapter 19, verse, verse 21 again. Verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. Which was based upon the law, which was based also in when you read in Acts. That's when they had a community set up. They gave to the poor that believed that's what they were doing. They wasn't giving it to uh, Israelites that followed Herod. They said, nope, we're going to deal with those that believe. Go ahead. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, mm -hmm. and come and follow me. And come and follow me. Where's that from? Get that Deuteron Deuteronomy 18, 18 and 19. This is why he said, come and follow me. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. And a prophet is Christ. That's what it's talking about. Not Joshua. It's talking about Christ. Go ahead. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Meaning I will kill him if you don't listen to him. Whoever doesn't listen to Christ, I will kill you. And that's, ex go to Acts. I'm sure that's exactly what it's saying. Is it Acts chapter 3? Where is that at? Mm, bear with me. Acts chapter, it's the early books. Uh, is it 322? Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, start at 22. Acts chapter 3, verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Watch this. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. I mean, I will kill him. That's what he's saying. God is going to kill you. You don't listen to Christ. He's going to kill you. That's what he's saying. So let's go back to Matthew 19. That's why you can't even help these, these uh, yaya Israelites that say, we don't believe in the New Testament. Well, shame on you. You don't believe in the old either. Back to Matthew 19. Matthew chapter 19, verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. See that? He had great possessions. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. So wait a minute. But when a young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He could have helped the ministry that Christ was pushing. He didn't want to. That was not in his mind to help the ministry that Christ was teaching. Okay? You had sisters. Give me that one in Luke. Might be Luke, is it four or eight? Always oh, get them mixed up. Where it said certain women that followed Christ. Bear with me a second. This just popped into my mind. Yeah, eight and two. Thank you. Luke chapter eight, verse two. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. See that, which ministered unto him of their substance. So the young man that was speaking to Christ, he could have did the same thing, but that was not his goal. That was not his intent. He was sorrowful. I got to help the poor. He didn't understand what Christ was saying. Okay, and the same message goes for all of us, even our brothers and sisters who are in the entertainment world, who get paid to make white folks happy. Their job is to sell what they got and help the poor. Okay, from there, let's go to Galatians 2. Because our brother, T.D. Jakes, he did mention the book of Galatians, chapter 2. Let's start at verse 11. Let me hear verse 11. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. This is what T.D. Jakes was mentioning, go ahead. Because he was to be blamed. Peter was to be blamed, go ahead. For before that certain came from James. You had certain Jews that came from James, the apostle, mm-hmm. He did eat with the Gentiles. He ate with the Gentiles before they got there. Go ahead. 
But when they were come, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. He withdrew and separated himself. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. Fearing the Jews. What verse? You went down to verse 14? Uh, not yet, Keep sir. going. Verse 13. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou... Being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews. Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? So I want you, I want y'all, to, I want y'all to highlight that last sentence right there. Why do you compel the Gentiles to live like the Jews? See, T.D. Jakes made a grievous error in his little speech there. He was saying that no, they didn't have to live like the Jews, but that verse that he ain't misquoted, it kills them right there. Peter and them was telling the Gentiles they had to live like the Jews. Okay? And we're going to get into that in more detail in a few minutes. So T.D. Jakes, my dear beloved brother, repent. But now, what, what was the problem with the Gentiles? What was the problem? Why did Peter feel such a way about them? We got to find out who they were first. Put up on the screen, the Bible dictionary. Let's put up on the screen. Now, some of you in here, I'm preaching to the choir, but this is for those who are new. Blow it up bigger than that, please. Yeah, put it up there. Read that. Read the whole thing at the top, the first paragraph. Yes, sir. Gentiles, n- nation, people. That's the literal meaning of the word Gentiles. It means nation, people. Go ahead. Usually, it means a non-Israelite people. Judges 4 and 2, Isaiah 11 and 10, 42 and 1, Malachi 1 and 11. So the word you want to look at is usually it means a non-Israelite people. Another word for usually is sometimes it means a non-Israelite people. Usually sometimes, meaning sometimes the word Gentile refers to Israelites. Now let me show you what happened with Northern Kingdom Israelites real quick. Watch, let me show, I'm going to give you just an example of the disdain that the two kingdoms had. Go to 2 Kings, chapter 3. Let's start at verse 13. Listen good. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 13. Now, uh, Elisha was of the southern kingdom. The southern, Elisha was of the southern kingdom. Now, watch. The, actually, let's start at verse 12. Verse 12. Listen good. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Now, I want you to notice, Jehoshaphat, that's the king of Judah. Then you had, uh, uh, so the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, two different kings, and the king of Edom went down with him. Watch this. Verse 13. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, what have I to do with thee? He looks at the northern kingdom, king. What do I have to do with you? Go ahead. Get thee to the prophets of thy father. Why don't you go to the prophets of your father that Jeroboam had set up? Remember he said, Jeroboam set up the basis of the northern kingdom men as prophets, as priests. Go ahead. And to the prophets of thy mother. And go to the prophets of your mama. Go ahead. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. So you had Judah, Israel, and Edom. Notice who Elisha's getting on. Northern kingdom. Read on. Verse 14. And Elisha said... As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. He said, if it wasn't for the king of Judah, I wouldn't even look at you. That's how much hatred there was between the two kingdoms. Okay? So now, if you ignore that, when you get to the New Testament, you're like, what is the problem going on? There was always a problem because Northern Kingdom went into idolatry. They learned the law, 
rejected it and followed idols. And the Lord told you he was against Northern Kingdom. So the prophets that came up, they was against Northern Kingdom. No good kings. No good kings. So, from there, let's go on back now. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Cornelius. Acts chapter 10. Let me look at something first. Yeah, read that. Sorry, verse 1? Yep. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So people read that and go, see, he was Italian. No, it says he was of the Italian band. That's a regiment, a military regiment. So watch this. Get Acts twenty two twenty six, please. We're going to come back in there, Jeremiah. We're coming right back here. I just want to show you something. He was of the Italian band. Read that. Acts chapter 22, verse 26. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then, then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. Read it when it says his name, the name, Paul. Might be the verse, but I'm not looking at it. Yes, it's verse 25. Read. Verse 25. And as, they, and as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. See that? Now, was Paul really a Roman? No, give me that in Romans, uh, was it 10? 11, thank you, and 1. 11 and 1. Romans chapter Paul was a Roman citizen, but was he truly a Roman? No, here it is. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So Paul was an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, so in Acts 22, he said he was Roman. So that's why you get, you get these slick Christians, when they want to say that Paul was right, they go to Acts 22 and say, see, he's Roman. No, he was an Israelite. So it's the same situation when we go back to Acts chapter 10 and verse 1 again. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A now, hold, here's another one. Here's another one. It says a centurion of the band. Can we look up the word uh, centurion, uh, Elisha? Uh, listen, look up the word centurion for us. And that's your mind. Read that when he gets it. Go ahead, read it. Centurion. Definition of centurion. An officer commanding a Roman century. Oh, I hate those definitions. But in other words, he's in the military. He's in a Roman Army. Now watch this. Go to Luke 3. Luke 3 and um, this is regarding John the Baptist. Start at verse 14. Look at verse 14. Luke chapter 3 verse 14. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, and what shall we do? So the question was, what shall we do? We, they wanted to repent. They wanted salvation. So these soldiers talking to John were not Edomites. These were Israelites. Read. And he said unto them, do violence to no man, mm -hmm. neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Read. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. So these soldiers mused about John, whether or not he was Christ. These were not Edomites. These were Israelite soldiers. Does everybody understand that? Should be no confusion, no dumbfoundedness. Go back to Acts 10 now and 1 again. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, 
a centurion of the band called the Italian band, oui. a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Verse 3, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. You know what's funny what you got to look at? When the angel spoke, he says, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? How did he know this was the Lord? If he was of another nation and had no dealings in the records and customs of Israel, how did he notice the Lord? These are little things we got to look at. Read that again, verse 4. Verse 4. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. So now let's jump to some key points. Verse 44. Let's just jump on over to verse 44. Verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. So now remember, what we, did, what we skipped, I want you to see who was with Cornelius. Mm. Somebody find that for me. It's right in here. It says Cornelius and all his kin. Mm. Verse what? Yes, read verse 24. Thank you. Verse 24. And the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and he called together his kinsmen and near friends. His kinsmen and near friends. So now let's jump to verse 44. I'm just hitting some key points. Verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, verse 47, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? They were still doing water baptism. Go ahead. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So now, this was the beginning of the Gentiles coming in, what they call the Gentiles coming into the church. Give me uh, the page of uh, Israel Revividus. Revividus. Nope. Right there. See the blue? Light blue. Light blue. There's three pages. Yes. Mm -hmm. Blow it up big. And let's and that's what you're going to read for us. This is from the book, uh, Israel Revividus. Blow it up bigger than that. It can fill the screen. That's it? Okay. Go ahead. It was probably about this time that the Jews passed the seas and settled in Europe. For they who understood the Greek language and had resided among the people in Asia, Syria, and Egypt might easily live in any part of the Grecian Empire, even in Macedonia and Achaia, according as they found it more convenient or they enjoyed greater liberty. Thus St. Paul found great numbers of them in all the cities of Greece. Talking about Israelites, the Jews, go ahead. When he went to preach the gospel there, about 250 years after the time of Antiochus, Antiochus the Great, the Jews were half These Greeks. These Jews. These Jews were half Greeks, whom the Eastern Jews called Hellenists. And they gave the Gentiles the name of Hellenes, which properly signifies. Next page. Mm -hmm. Greeks. Whence it comes that in St. Paul's epistles, Greek and Gentiles signify the same thing. So these Jews were called Greeks. And he called them Gentiles. That's why Paul was saying there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Why? Because they are the same race. Next page, please. Now, this is what we're going to get to with Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. It will, of course, be argued by those who hold the, hold the call of the Gentiles theory. The call of the Gentiles theory, a theory is a guess. 
The call of the Gentiles theory is what T.D. Jakes, Creflo, and all Christendom holds on to. The call of the Gentiles theory. Go ahead. That these Greeks were Gentiles. Meaning these Greeks, they, they think those Greeks were other nations, other people. Go ahead. To whom the gospel was thus early preached and who became Christians. It has, however, already been shown that this is quite antithetical to the manner in which the Greeks and Gentiles... Can we look up that word antithetical? That's not a black word. Antithetical. A-N-T-I, thet. <laughs> right there. See, define antithetical. Yeah, right there. Blow it up big. Read that, Netramiah. Antithet antithetical. Directly opposed or contrasted. Mutually incompatible. You see that? Y'all see that? Directly opposed to or contrast to mutually incompatible. Let's go back to the article, to the page in the book. Go back to the top again. Read. It will, of course, be argued by those who hold the call of the Gentiles theory that these Greeks were Gentiles to whom the gospel was thus early preached and who became Christians. It has, however, already been shown that this is quite anti antithetical in contrast or opposed go ahead. to the manner in which the Greeks and Gentiles respectively are referred to in the Acts of the Apostles go ahead. and in the Epistles. And in the letters of Paul and Peter in them. Go ahead. And it is inconsistent. And it is inconsistent. Go ahead. With the general tenor of the New Testament to come to any different conclusion than that the Greeks, or rather perhaps the upper classes of those who at the time went by the name of Greeks, were other than descendants of some at least of the lost ten tribes. See that? Northern Kingdom. Northern ki so the scholars know that. But our people in Christianity ain't figured that thing out yet. And when you ask them, what happened to the other tribes of Israel in the New Testament? Nobody knows. They just disappeared. That's why they got this thing called re replacement theology, where the ten tribes are replaced with white folks and Chinese and all other nations. Replacement theology. Garbage. So let's go on back now to Acts chapter 13 I want to go to now. No, Acts chapter, I'm sorry. Yeah, give me Acts 13.44. Acts chapter 13, verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, that they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming, then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. You Jews. You Jews should have first been spoken to you according to prophecy. Zechariah 12 and 7. I will raise the tents of Judah first. Go ahead. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. We turn to the northern kingdom. That's what it's saying right there. And I'm going to prove that thing furthermore. Go to Acts 15. Where do I want to start here? Hmm. Let's start at verse 5. So the point is, I'm going to show you right here that Cornelius is an Israelite and that we got to keep the commandments. Let's start at verse 5. Acts chapter 15, verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So now when you read the part about the law of Moses, people get confused. They'll say, see, we don't got to do that. But as, I'm not even going to explain it. We're just going to keep reading. Go ahead. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, Ye know how that a good while ago God made a choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel. So what was he making reference to? Acts chapter, what chapter, brothers? 10, with Cornelius. Go ahead. And believe. 
verse 8. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. That's what we read in Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 48. Go ahead. Verse 9. And put no difference between us and them. And put no difference between us and them. That's why Paul said, there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Good. Purifying their hearts by faith. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Go ahead. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Read. Verse 12. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles. Now, you them. might ask, what is the yoke? Of bondage. That where did we read that at? Mm, that was in verse ten. Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? You might ask, what is that yoke? As we keep reading, it's going to be cleared up. But I don't want to interject on it yet. R read on. Verse thirteen. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, "Men and brethren, hearken unto me." So now the apostle James stands up. He says, "Let me say something regarding the Gentile." confusion and what they got to do read Simeon hath declared how God at the first did Peter it, Simeon is another name for Peter Simeon hath declared how God at the first go ahead did visit the Gentiles Cornelius and his kinsmen and friends to take out of them a people for his name read well here it comes his if you were confused about Cornelius his kinsmen and friends he gonna explain it now verse 15 and to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. And to this agrees the prophecies of the prophet Amos. Read. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. What happened to this? What is the tabernacle of David? The 12 tribes of Israel. What happened to it? It fell. It collapsed. There was a split. They were dispersed throughout the earth. Read it again. Verse 16. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof. I will build again the ruins thereof. Go ahead. And I will set it up. And I will set it up. Go ahead. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. So now he's quoting a prophet. I want to read the quote. Let's go to Amos 9. Verse 11 and 12. Because it sounds a little, the bottom half of what uh, James is saying is a little bit different than Amos. Amos 9, verse 11 and 12. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen mm -hmm. and close up the breaches thereof. Mm -hmm. So he's prophesying to reunite the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. What does that have to do with Cornelius? Because Cornelius was an Israelite of the northern kingdom. Go ahead. And I will build it as in the days of old. And I will build it as in the days of old. Go ahead. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. And all the, the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. So wait a minute. Verse 12 there, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. Y'all know who Edom is, right? That's Esau. That's the white man. That's white folks, Caucasians. And of all the heathen, all the nations which are called by my name, meaning what? They would adopt the names of Jews and Christians. That's what, write that down. That's what it means, called by my name. But the point in verse 12 is a little different in its speech than Acts 15. Let's go back to Acts 15. Read verse 15 to 17 again. And we're going to concentrate on verse 17. Go ahead. Acts chapter 15, verse 15. And to agree the words of the prophets. And to this and agree. to this agree the words of the prophets. As it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, verse 17, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, 
and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Guess what? Verse 17 is saying the same thing as Amos 9 verse 12. He just worded it different. Why? Because these, remember where these letters had to go through. There, there were checkpoints. Rome had to make sure there was nothing strange in your New Testament writings. So what does this mean? That the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. Like I said in Amos 9, 12, these other nations call themselves by the name of the Lord as Jews, Jewish people, and Christians. They say, we are the people of God. I am you, an ye Yehudi. Really? Yes, and the other group says that they're Christians. We believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Really? So how are they going to seek after the Lord? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 14, 1 to 3. How are they going to seek after the Lord? What is it talking about? It's talking about captivity. I'm going to make it plain and simple. They're going to seek after the Lord in captivity. Isaiah 14, 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. The strangers are the other nations. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of David. So these other nations are going to cleave to the house of David. Go ahead. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Mm -hmm. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. We shall possess them. Hold that, Nehemiah, and go back to Amos 9 and 12. It's saying the same thing. Amos chapter 9, verse 12, that they, may that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Go back to Isaiah 14. Where was you at? What verse? Verse 2. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So that's saying the same thing as Amos 9 and 12. Watch this, Zechariah 14, 16 through 19. Look, it's a little more detailed in there. Because you might be saying, well... How is the residue of the heathen going to seek after the Lord? Like it says in Acts 15. I'm still confused. Zechariah 14, 16 through 19. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to feast, to keep the feast of tabernacles. So was that it? Verse 19. Go ahead. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations. And of the punishment of all nations. That includes Esau, Edom. Go ahead. That come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That keep not the Feast of Tabernacles. So any nation that disobeys, first off, you've got to ask yourself, how are they going to learn about the Feast of Tabernacles? We are going to teach them. In fact, we're going to teach them all the law, statutes, and commandments of God. All the nations are going to learn. Isaiah 60 and 10, please. 60 and 12, I want. 60 and 12. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Now that you got your thoughts clear with that, now let's go back to Acts 15. Verse 15 and 16 again. Acts chapter 15, verse 15. We're going to read down to 17. Go ahead. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. So who are they discussing? Cornelius, his kinsmen and friends. Where's the fulfillment of this verse right here? Read. Verse 17. 
that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. The residue of men might seek after the Lord. Remember, go back to Amos 9 now. Hold it. Hold that. We're doing a comparison. Amos 9 and 12. Amos chapter 9, verse 12. That they may, they may possess the remnant of Edom. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. And of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Back to Acts 15, 17. Acts chapter 15, verse 17. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. That's Esau, Edom. They're going to seek after the Lord in captivity. Go ahead. And all the Gentiles. And all the other nations. Go ahead. Upon whom my name is called. As Jews and Christians. Followers of God. Really. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Who doeth all these things. Everybody understand that so far? No, I won't see nobody lost on the street. From there, let's keep reading now. Back to Acts 15, and you just read verse 17. Let's keep reading. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Let's not trouble Cornelius, his friends and kinsmen, which are turned to God, these Gentiles. Now, it's going beyond that because remember Paul in Acts 13, as we just read, he went beyond that. He taught more of the uh, other Israelites scattered. Read. Verse 20. Here it comes. Listen good. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled, and from blood. Stop right there. He only names four things. Now I want you all to put on your thinking cap. I've told you many times before. The New Testament is an abbreviated writing. He named four things. I want you all to notice what he didn't mention. He mentioned pollutions of idols. He mentioned fornication. He mentioned things strangled and from blood. How come he didn't mention not stealing? Hmm? How come he didn't mention not bearing false witness? Does that mean the Gentile Israelites can lie and steal? Does that mean we can, they could dishonor their mothers and fathers? Does that mean they can kill? Because he didn't mention kill here. What I'm showing you, they gave an abbreviated message here. Read it again, verse 20. Verse 20. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Stop right there. Pollutions of idols. Watch this. Give me Exodus 23 to 8. So T.D. Jakes, the apologetics, believe you do not have to keep any commandments for the kingdom. Then what is this pollution of idols that they got to abstain from? That's law. Exodus 20, please, 3 to 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. See, verse 4, I'm just interjecting. Verse 4, people go, see, you're supposed to have no images. That's wicked as hell. Take down that black image. They hate the black images we're putting up. But they never had, notice they never had a problem with white Jesus. But as soon as we put up the black image, oh, no, you're sinning. Now they're all scriptural uh, uh, practitioners. Now it's, give me Exodus 20 and 4, you wicked Negroes and Latinos that say that too. Look at verse 5. It's going to explain verse 4. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Is anybody in here bowing down to that painting that we got of Christ? No. Are any of your children bowing down to it and burning candles? No. Read. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. All of this deals with abstaining from pollutions of idols. Read. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Meaning in lies. Don't take his name in lies. Go ahead. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Come on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. 
In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Mm -hmm. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and, and hallowed it. Stop right there. You might ask yourself, well, why did I read down through the Sabbath? T.D. Jakes made a foolish statement. He said the Jews had days and ceremonies, but the Gentiles had nothing. That's a lie. Under the Greek captivity, you can read about it in the book of Maccabees. Did they have celebrations that they forced our people to keep? You better believe it. No matter what God, what idol you were worshiping, even white Jesus, there's a celebration you keep. There are exalted days, like Christmas is an exalted day to keep under white Jesus. So, remember Christ um, divided, he kept, he's, what's the word I want? He summed up all the law in two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So that first one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, deals with all the laws that pertain to worshiping him. Guess what that includes? The Sabbath. Because when you worship an idol, they have holy days that they keep. Valentine's Day is an idolatrous day in honor of Cupid, the god of love. It's a day of orgies. The god, Greek goddess Diana, which goes back to Ashtoreth with all the, the breastuses, is dealing with Easter. So what do you hell you mean we're not supposed to have any days? So you mean that when the Gentile Israelites came in to the truth, which were Israelites, Gentile Israelites we call them, they just sat around and didn't observe anything. Meanwhile, they were celebrating Kwanzaa and Christmas and Easter and Valentine's Day. Now they come to the truth, we don't celebrate anything. And these Christian apologetics, when you ask them on the street, I'm going to show you, they all lie. You say, do you celebrate anything? They say, no. When was Christ born? Hmm. Nobody really knows. They lie. All these Christian apologetics, they lie. They celebrate birthdays, Christmas, New Year's Eve, some of them even Valentine's Day. They are wicked as hell. T.D. Jakes himself lies. Thanksgiving, where's that in the Bible? So don't celebrate God's days, but celebrate the days the white man gave us in slavery. I need y'all to use common sense see how stupid that doctrine is. So, Let's go on back now to Acts 15. And we are at verse 20 again, Nehemiah. Acts chapter 15, verse 20. Mm -hmm. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. That goes back to God's laws. Okay. Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Read. And from fornication. Uh-oh. And from fornication. Remember what Christ said. The first commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. He said, and the second commandment is like unto it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That deals with the laws for your fellow man. So that falls under fornication and from fornication. Now the word fornication, listen good, you're not going to find it in the Old Testament. Why? Because it's Greek. It's a Greek word which deals with sexual immorality. But just in case you're lost, I'm going to help everybody out. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 1 so we can get a gist of where we can start looking in the Old Testament regarding fornication. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. So a, a, a case of fornication came up in the church of Corinth. A man was having sex with his father's wife. So that helps us begin to understand fornication. Fornication, this guy was having sex with his father's wife. Where can we find that in the Old Testament? Leviticus 18, verse 8. We're going to start there. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 8. Mm -hmm. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. 
That's dealing with your step. Read above it, about his mama, above it. Yes, sir. Verse 7. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. So notice it's calling this woman your mother. Go ahead. She is thy mother. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover. Don't have sex with her. But verse 8 deals with not your mother, but your father's wife. That's different than your mama. That is your, what we call today, your stepmother. Everybody understand that? Verse 8 again. Verse 8. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. She's your father's wife, but she ain't your mama. Go ahead. It is thy father's nakedness. That was it? Yes, So sir. that helps us understand fornication. It goes back to the law. Read on. Verse 9. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Read. The nakedness of thy son's daughter. Your son's daughter is your grandchild. Go ahead. Or of thy daughter's daughter, mm -hmm. even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. Read. Verse 11. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter. This is what we call today your stepsister, your father's wife's daughter. Go ahead. Begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Read. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. She is thy father's near kinswoman. That's what we call today your aunt. Go ahead. Verse 13. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister. For she is thy mother's near kinswoman. We call that our aunt today too. Go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. Let's just jump down for time's sake. Jump down to verse 18. Verse, I just like this one so much. Verse 18. No, actually, I like verse 17 too for some of you nasty people. Read verse 17 for me. Verse 17. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Some of you, I won't say some of you are sitting up in here, but some of you online, you know what I'm talking about. Not only are you having sex with the mother, you saw the daughter and she's as good looking as mama. And you banging the daughter too. God's law says, don't do that. That's sin. Read. Of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter. To uncover her nakedness. It's all in the family. Go ahead. He banging everybody. Go ahead. For they are her near kinswomen. It is wickedness. The Bible says that's wickedness. Go ahead. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her. The wife to her sister means two women at the same time. You know, brothers, you used to get, some of y'all used to get down like that. Read that again. I just like the way that sounds. Verse 18. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness. Beside the other in her lifetime. Beside the other. Beside the, meaning they together in the bed with you. What they call that in French? The menage de toi. Some of y'all looking up going. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Verse 19. Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. That her menstrual cycle. Go ahead. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself, thyself with her. That's adultery. Go ahead. Jump over to verse 22. Verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Homosexuality. That deals with lesbianism too. Read. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself, thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusing. You see these women by a big dog and then always stocking up on peanut butter. What the hell is this? Go on back now to Acts 15. Some, I know none of these sisters up in here. Acts 15, and we're back in verse 20 again. What I'm showing y'all is, yes, the disciples were giving those Gentile Israelites law. And, it, and as abbreviated as it is written, what they're saying is based upon God's law. Read verse 20 again. Acts chapter 15 verse 20. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. So that deals with all the idolatrous laws. 
the laws that deals with not worshiping idols, not serving them, not uh, following their customs and holidays. You must substitute that when you repent with what God says. Go ahead. And from fornication. Now we understand that. It's dealing with those sexual sins. Okay. In all its, its diversities. Go ahead. And from things strangled. Uh-oh. And from things strangled. Go ahead. And from blood. And from blood. What is that talking about? Things strangled. and That's the dietary law. Write that down. Because you have Christians. They didn't teach the dietary law. The devil is a liar. What do you mean from things strangled and from blood? That's the diet. Let's read that. Give me that. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 15, 22. But from thing, from strangled. Things strangled. Deuteronomy 15, 22. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 22. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt eat it within thy gates. The unclean and the clean person shall eat it alike as the roebuck and as the heart. That, the roebuck and the heart are in the deer family. Go ahead. You gave an example. It says as the roebuck, meaning those animals with the cleft hoof and that are cloven footed and they chew the cud. Read. Only thou shalt not eat the blood thereof. Don't eat the blood. What should we do with the blood? Thou shalt pour it upon the ground as water. You got to pour the blood out like water. So you couldn't eat strangled food. You had to pour the blood out. Now give me Leviticus 17, 12. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 12. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood. Neither shall any stranger that so sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel or the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof. So we had to pour out the blood. Was that, let me finish verse 12 because I'm not looking at it. And, and I was going into 13. Okay, right? let's go on back to Acts 15, please. And read 20 again. So now we got our minds settled. When people say they didn't teach the Gentile Israelites to keep commandments, oh, he was a damn liar. Read that verse 20 again. Acts chapter 15, verse 20. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So that's only four things they mentioned in this letter. Only four things. So again, what was missing? Stealing wasn't mentioned. Lying wasn't mentioned. Honoring your parents wasn't mentioned. And killing wasn't mentioned. Does that mean that we can go around and do little things? No. Watch next verse. It explains it. 21 explains what's at the loss of words. Verse 21. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Why did he say that? So if there was anything else they had to learn in detail... On the Sabbath, they're being taught. Everybody understand what's going on here? Stop listening to these evil, dumb Christians who don't know a daggone thing. From there, from there, from there, from there. Let's go to chapter 21, Acts 21. Yes. So that's saying that every Sabbath, every Sabbath they were fellowshipping and they were reading the laws. Exactly. To That's keep in exactly. mind the brothers and the sisters to keep the laws. Exactly. So in their letter, however, they just gave an abbreviation. Stay away from pollutions of idols. Don't commit fornication. You know they had to explain. Fornication, what the hell does that mean? They had to, of course, it had to be explained. And in all this diversity, diversity, it's very, it's various kinds. And the dietary law, they taught them that too. So now we're in Acts 21. Is Christians online getting mad right now? Why? Because you've been lied to. You wicked as hell. Acts 21. We're going to start at verse 18, please. Acts chapter 21, verse 18. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Verse 20. Now we know who them Gentiles are. The part of the ten tribes. And part what? You also had the other northern southern kingdom was scattered as well. Some of them. Read. Verse 20. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe. 
and they are all zealous of the law. All the Jews that believe, Paul, they are zealous of the law. They want to do the law. Go ahead. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. So now they say, wait a minute, but Paul, they hear there's some controversy about you. There's a controversy that you're teaching in those daggone letters of yours that the Gentiles don't got to keep, that the Jews that are among the Gentiles don't got to keep God's laws. Read. Saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the custom. See that? So there's a rumor that you're teaching people not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Let me give you an example of that. Uh, where is it? I believe it's 1 Corinthians. Is it chapter 7? I want the one that says, I ain't got it on top of my head. It says, oh, here it goes. 1 Corinthians 7 and 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 19. Start at 18. Verse 18. Is any man called being circumcised? Are you a Jew? You've been called in this truth and you have been circumcised? Go ahead. Let him not become uncircumcised. Don't become uncircumcised, meaning don't stop doing the law. That's how you got to read this thing. Go ahead. Is any called in uncircumcision? Are you called in uncircumcision like Father Abraham was called in uncircumcision? This was to the Gentile Israelites. They were called being uncircumcised. Go ahead. Let him not be circumcised. Let him not be circumcised. Now you can, what does he mean by that? They don't got to do it. Huh? Yes, they did. But he's talking about don't circumcise yourselves like the Jews did. Meaning you don't got to follow the exact or explicit uh, strictness of the laws of sacrifice. That's what he's going into. Read. Verse 19. Watch this. Circumcision is nothing. Circumcision is nothing. Go ahead. And uncircumcision and is nothing. Meaning you Jews that are circumcised is nothing. And you Israelite, Gentile Israelites, is nothing either. Go ahead. But the keeping of the commandments of God. You see that part right there? Is circumcision a commandment? Yes. So that's why you got to try to understand what is Paul saying. Is he saying don't keep the commandments? He's never saying don't keep the commandments. He's just writing things very hard to be understood. And that was meant for us today. Let's go on back now. So that was an example of what Acts 21 is going into. In other words, Bishop, what is the purpose of you circumcised but you don't keep the commandment? Exactly. That makes no sense. That's right. what he's saying. Yes, exactly right. Because you remember, the Pharisees were all circumcised. Did they keep the commandments? Hell no, they was wicked as hell. So back to Acts 21. And what verse were we at? Verse 21. 21. Acts 21, 21. Acts chapter 21, verse 21. And they, un they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together. What does that mean? Everybody got to be on one accord. The multitude must come together. We must all be on one accord. We got to deal with this confusion with you, Paul, in your letters. Read. For they will hear that thou art come. Read. Verse 23. Do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. To take them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walketh orderly and keepest the law. See that? So now what vow? Number 6, 13. Number 6, verse 13, or just the vow to Nazarite. A temporary one. Temporary vow to Nazarite. T number 6, verse 13 and 14. Numbers chapter 6, verse 13. And this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and he shall offer his offering unto the Lord, one he lamb of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for peace offerings. That's going back. So that's what they were telling Paul to do. Read it again, Acts 21 and verse 24. Acts 21, verse 24. Start at 23 again. Verse 23. Do, for, do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, and 
that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walketh orderly and keepest the law. Verse 25. I'm and sorry. Go back to number six. I should have read this. I know somebody's going, but they didn't shave their heads. Number six. Go back to number six and jump to verse 18. I know after I'm going to get an email, but they didn't shave their heads. It ain't the same thing. Shut the hell up. Numbers chapter 6, verse 18. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall take the hair of the head of his separation and put it in the fire, which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. All right. Now, let's go on back now to Acts 21 uh, and verse 24 again. Acts chapter 21, verse 24. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. So James, their plan was, they said, look, Paul, we need the people to see you keeping the law, the strictness of the law of Moses. That way, there'll be no confusion about your letters that you've been talking about. Read. Verse 25. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing. What do you mean no such thing? The vow of the Nazarite. They don't have to do that. They don't have to. And because what after, right after the vow of the Nazarite, not only did you have to uh, shave your head, you had to do what? Sacrifice. Which means if you're sacrificing, that means what? You really didn't believe in Christ. So they were saying the Gentiles ain't got to do that. They were not brought up like that. So they didn't have to do the vows of the Nazareth. Read that again. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols. Now we read that earlier. It goes into all the laws that pertain to idolatry. Go ahead. And from blood. That's the dietary law. And from strangle. That's dietary law. And from fornication. That's sexual sins. Again, it's an abbreviated message. It only lists four things not to do. But again, stealing is not mentioned. Lying is not mentioned. Honoring parents is not mentioned. And no killing is not mentioned. You got to use your common sense. Read. Verse 26. Then Paul took the men and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. From there, let's go to Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you something. Uh, what do I want? Mm. I want the part, maybe y'all know where it is, because I didn't write it down. Where in Galatians it says... Oh, Galatians 5, and I want verse 4. Galatians chapter 5. Start at 1. Start at 1. Verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, y'all see that part? Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hold that, Nechemiah. Go back to Acts chapter... 15, I believe it was. Let me look. Where it said, why put a yoke? Yeah, Acts 15 and 10. Acts chapter 15, verse 10. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians. Five and one. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage that he's making reference to is the law of sacrifice. Why? Because the law of sacrifice could not make anyone perfect. You can read it, write this down. Hebrews 10, verse 1 through 8. You can read on that on your own because we've gone over it many times before. That was the only law and everything that pertained to sacrifice, like you had to go to the Levites who had to do this for you and do that for you and clean the, the ashes out. All of that is a yoke of bondage. That's what it's talking about. Read on. Verse 2. Behold, 
I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Why? Right. Because people, the Israelites back then, like the, they thought because they were circumcised in the flesh, they were good with God. No, because you weren't keeping the commandments. So your circumcision was garbage. Go ahead. Verse 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. You holding on to that circumcision, that's what makes you good? Then you are debtor to do everything in the law. Go ahead. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Christ has become of no effect. Because what? Why? Because they didn't believe in Christ. So if you don't believe in Christ, that means you must do everything in the old, under the old covenant, including stick with them sacrifices. And if you was a poor Israelite, shame on you. You done. Because some sacrifices was beyond a turtle dove. Some sacrifice, you had to buy a bull and an ox. And if you didn't have no money, bye bye. Read. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, mm -hmm. ye are fallen from grace. You're fallen from Christ. Go ahead. Verse 5. For we, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Mm -hmm. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, mm -hmm. nor uncircumcision. But faith which worketh by love. But faith which worketh by love. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me that second John, verse 6. Second John, verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So when the apostles talked about love... They were making reference to the commandments. Go back to Galatians 5 and 6, please. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. But faith, but faith in Christ, which worketh by keeping the commandments. Everybody understand that? Now watch this. Let's jump, jump on down. I want to get to some key points. Jump down to verse... Uh, 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now the works of the flesh. Now we're going through this because they, like when you look at our brother T.D. Jakes, he said, no, no, you didn't have to keep any commandments. Well, if that's true, we just proved that a lie with love, the word love there. Now we're going to go into the works of the flesh and see what that's talking about. Verse 19 again. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Now, Paul's talking about adultery. Give me that in Deuteronomy 22, 22, please. I'm showing you that Christianity is garbage. It has fooled and deceived us all. And this is why they ignore the writing, they ignore the words of Christ and run straight to Paul, who wrote things hard to be understood, like Peter told us about. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. So that's the law of adultery. Let's go on back to Galatians 5. So what is Paul teaching the Galatians? The commandments, the law of God. Back to Galatians 5, 19 again. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Mm -hmm. Fornication. Oh, didn't we cover that in fornication? We covered that 1 Corinthians 5 and 1, Leviticus 18, 8 down. But let me give you two more scriptures for fornication. Leviticus 19, 29, please. Remember, fornication deals with sexual sins. Leviticus 19, verse 29. That's all I want. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. What does that mean? Dress her modestly. Don't dress her like a whore. And she ain't supposed to have no boyfriends. That's whoredom. Read it again. That's prostitution. Because all of us knew when we had girlfriends, what we done did, let's go to the movies and sit in the back in the last row. But I can't see the movie. Say, I want the movie! <laughs> Read that again. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Lest the land fall to, to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness. From there, give me Deuteronomy 23, 17. I'm still dealing with fornication. Deuteron Sexual sins. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. 
There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. See there? That goes into homosexuality and lesbianism. Go on back to Galatians 5. So what do they mean Paul never taught us to keep the commandments? They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Back to Galatians 5, 19, please. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness. Now uncleanness is a very broad term. It can go into sex, but it can also deal with um, the dietary law. Watch this. Give me that in Leviticus eleven forty seven. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 47. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Was that it? Yes, sir. Give me 1 Samuel 14, 32. Like I said, the term um, uncleanness is very broad. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 32. And the people flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slew them on the ground. And the people did eat them with the blood. So that goes into the dietary law, the uncleanness. Let's go on back. Galatians, Galatians 5, what verse you at? Uh, 19 still, sir. Go ahead. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, Lasciviousness. Can we look up that word, Alicia? Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. It's right there. Yep. Blow it up big. I like the top. The top, just, yep, just blow it up big. Can you? Okay, read that. Put it on the screen. Lascivious. Inclined to lustfulness. Wanton. Lewd. Number two, arousing sexual desire. Number three, indicating sexual interest or expressive of lust or lewdness. So now, sexual lust, lustful lust, give me, give me in the book of Susanna, in the Apocrypha, chapter one, we're going to read eight through 11. Just to give you an example of lasciviousness. What verse? We're going to read 8 through 11. Chapter 1, 8 through 11. The history of Susanna, verse 8. And the two elders saw her going in every day and walking, so that their lust was inflamed So what her. was inflamed? Their lust. Their lust. Their, this is lasciviousness. Their lust was, see that word? Inflamed. They couldn't put it out. No water could quench it. Only one thing could quench that fire. Read it again. Verse 8. And the two elders saw her going in every day and walking, so that their lust was inflamed toward her. And they perverted their own minds. And they perverted their own minds. You know, well, I don't want to say I don't want to say that. You know, you look at somebody, you look at a girl, and then you look at a woman, and your mind gets perverted. Oh, what I could do. Oh, what I would like to do. Mm, slap it up. Rub it, rub it, rub it down. Mm, the hell is this? So their mind was inflamed towards Susanna. What verse you at? Verse 9. We're reading down to 11. Yes, sir. And they perverted their own mind and turned away their eyes that they might not look unto heaven. They didn't even, they, they said, we're not going to look to heaven. Go ahead. Nor remember just judgments. Verse 10, and albeit they were both wounded with her love, yet durst not one show another his grief. Mm. Verse 11, for they were ashamed to declare their lust that they de desired to have to do with her. See that? Let's go on back to Galatians now. Now we got an example of lasciviousness. Gal so we're in. So what I want you to see is Paul is going through the law for us. What verse you at? Uh, 20? 20, yes, sir. Go ahead. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Idolatry. Idolatry. We read about that earlier in Exodus 20, correct? We read verse 4 all the way down. Okay, read on. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Give me that in Exodus 22, verse 18. Witchcraft. 
So Paul is taking us step by step. And isn't this odd for people that say, no, you're saved by grace and not by works. You don't have to do anything. In a really? So we can be an adulterer. We can be lascivious. We can be witches. Read that. Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. The Bible says you shall not allow a witch to live. Give me the uh, follow up with that. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Am I going too fast? Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter. Wait, 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 wait. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire. That's going into abortion, sacrificing your kids to death. It says, or that useth divination, or an observer of times. You know what an observer of time is? You know the people in the horoscope? I'm a Sagittarius, and my, my horoscope says, Wednesday is not a good day for me, so I can't go to work today. Oh, you're, you're, you're a Capricorn? We go, we go well together. Meanwhile, he's a child molester. But because our zodiacs <laughs> are compatible... We can be together. What are you going to say? Hey, you know, some of, well, it was before my generation, but some of y'all elderly people in here, y'all know that song, Float On by the Floaters? Oh, yeah. My mama my had that name record. is Larry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take my hand. <laughs> What's, what sign are you? Capricorn? <laughs> what the hell is this? Where are you at, Nechemiah? At verse 10 at the bottom, sir. Go ahead. Verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter. Or an ench like, remember in New York, the sister had all kind of witchcraft books trying to cast spells. Oh, no, you got it on New Orleans and Louisiana where they plant your drawers in a yard so that you can't go but so far. The hell is this? Putting period juice in your, period blood in your food. To bind you. Look, make it look like it's spaghetti sauce. The hell is this? I'm going to make a love potion. He going to fall in love with me. The hell is this? Read on. Or a witch. Verse, e verse 11. Or a charmer. Or a consulter. You know what a charmer is? What's that rabbit's foot? That's my lucky charm. The hell is this? Charms. Go ahead. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a consulter with familiar I want to see. I want my mama. Hey, can, can you raise my mama up? I have a question for my mama. What's my birth certificate at? <laughs> you raised me from the dead for this boy? The hell is this? Ask your daddy. Ask your daddy. So that was in that movie Ghost with Whoopi Goldberg. Read on. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Or a necromancer. Somebody that talks to the dead. Go ahead. Verse 12, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So let's go on back to Galatians 5. And we are in verse 20. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Hatred. Give me that Leviticus nineteen seventeen. So Paul is writing this letter to the Galatians, to those Israelites in Galatia about keeping God's laws. Go ahead. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon them. Read. Him. So the question is, who is your neighbor? Who is the brother? Is he my brother in Christ? You have a black people always talk to the white man's their brother in Christ. Read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Your brother, your neighbor is the children of your people. Solidarity, Negro. Learn it. Go on back. Give me 1 John 4.20. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. Dealing with hatred. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God 
whom he hath not seen. So all that is based on the law of Leviticus 19, verse 17 and 18. That's what it's all based on. Go back to Galatians, please. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. Variance. When you're at odds with somebody, give me that in Deuteronomy 19, 15 through 18. Variance. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in, in any sin that he sinned. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Y'all realize that when Christ was telling us how to deal with our brothers in Matthew 18, he was basing it on the law. So when Christians say you don't have to keep the uh, oh God, they annoy me. Read on. Verse 16. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is. So that's what variance is going to when you have controversy one with another. Go ahead. Shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. So variance deals with that law. Let's go on back to Galatians 5 again. What verse we at? At verse 20. Go ahead. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations. Emulations. Let's get that in emulate. Can we look up the word emulations, Alicia? Emulations or emulate? Read. Emulation. Effort to match or surpass a person or achievement, typically by imitation. You trying to be better than somebody. You're not. You, let me give an example. Give me that in 2 Samuel 15 and 1. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is one of the tribes of Israel. So notice, the people were coming to the king, to Absalom's father, David. Read. Verse 3. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man depu uh, deputed, deputed. Of the, deputed of the king to hear thee. So he would play interference. Read on. We're going down to 6. Come on. Absalom said, Moreover, O oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. Verse 6. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Absalom's plan. This was a 40-year plan in the making. His plan was to be king, to dethrone his father. Emulation. Emulation. So we can't roll in that type of a spirit. Okay, yeah. Was, wasn't there a brother who left a couple years ago who had that emulative, emulative spirit that wanted to surpass the elder that was there in front of him? Oh, yes. Come to me. Come to me. Yep. Exactly. You have problems. Come to me. Yeah, right. Exactly. I love the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> uh, go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, Wrath. Wrath. Let's get that in Esther, chapter 3, verse 5. Esther, chapter 3, and verse 5. Wrath. Esther, chapter 3, verse 5. And when Haman saw that Mordecai 
bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then was Haman full of wrath. He was full of wrath because Mordecai, our forefather, did not bow to him. His red behind because he was an Edomite. Well, that was it? Yes, sir. Give me Proverbs 15, 18. Now, the reason I'm going to the Old Testament scriptures is because when Paul wrote these New Testament, these new epistles, the, there was no New Testament. These were in the, in the makings. Everybody understand that? Everything that they wrote was based on Old Testament writings. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 18. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Chapter 19, verse 19 of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 19. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment, for if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Right, because he's filled with wrath. He can't control his anger. Let's go on back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife. Give me that in Proverbs 26, 17 about strife. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 17. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belongeth not to him, is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. What happens when you take a dog by the ears when you grab him? What happens? So you know what that verse is saying? Mind your business. If the problem has nothing to do with you, and that's for you sisters really, don't put your nose in it because you're going to get bit. You ever understand that? Mm-hmm. Go back to Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions. Seditions. Let's look up that word seditions, Elisha. Seditions. Okay, put it up. Sedition. Conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or monarch. Now, there's a few places we can go with a lot of places. Let's look at Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, Ezra, I'm sorry, Ezra 4 verse 15. We could go to the one in, in Numbers too and do the, remember with um, Korah, Dathan, and on. They incited rebellion against Moses. Let's go to um, Ezra 4 15. I never read that one. Ezra chapter 4 verse 15. All we want is 15. That search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers. So shalt thou find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and provinces and that they have moved sedition within the same of old time. So they were, they were trying to say we were seditious. Was that it, Netramiah? No, sir. Go ahead. For which cause was this city destroyed? From there. Just going back. I'm just cutting down the scriptures for time's sake. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Heresies. Let's go to Jeremiah 28. We're going to read 8 and 9, then we're going to jump down. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So they were prophesying the destruction and fall of all the nations, all the empires. Read. Verse 9. The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Jump down to verse 15. Verse we're going to read down to 17. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Verse 15. Then said that the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet. So Jeremiah the prophet is now speaking with Hananiah the prophet. Go ahead. Hear now, Hananiah. The Lord hath not sent thee. The Lord did not send you. Go ahead. But thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Because he was prophesying lies, heresies against the Lord. Read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. Verse 17. 
So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. So what was Hananiah preaching? Verse 9 again, in case you missed it. Verse 9. The prophet which prophesieth of peace. Peace. Meaning that's that motivational, you feel good, I'm going to make you feel good. You're going to get money. You're, this is your season to be blessed in Jesus. Everything's going to go right in this country, in this world. Everything's going to be good in your family. Don't worry, just put it all in Jesus' hands. That's that peace stuff. And the Lord killed Hananiah for that because there's no peace. You're in a, you're in, you're in a nation here held for captivity to be delivered from here, which means this nation must go down. So where's all this motivational, feel-good religion stuff that T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, and all these other black ministers are teaching about? Peace is evil in the sight of the Lord. It's evil. They make the people, like I said, what, read it again. Verse 15 again. Watch what it says. Verse 15. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. You make the people to trust in a lie. You got all these women and men believing in some feel-good, motivational, get some damn money doctrine. That's what it's talking about. Let's go on back to Galatians now. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. Envyings. 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 Uh, give me Proverbs 3.31. Envyings. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. Don't envy the white man. Don't envy the other nations. Was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. And choose none of his ways. And choose none of his ways. Don't choose his religions. Don't choose his politics. Don't choose none of his ways. Let's go on back. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. Envyings. Murders. Murders. Oh, no. Where did it go? Murders. Finally. Exodus 20 and 13. Exodus 20 and 13. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Go on back now to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. Envyings, murders, drunkenness. Drunkenness. Proverbs 31, 4 and 5. Again, Paul is not making things up. Everything Paul is teaching the Galatians is based upon the Old Testament writings. Read. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 4. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law. And this is the reason why, because when you drink too much, you will forget the law. Go ahead. And pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. And you will pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Was that it? Yes, sir. Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. Revelings, Numbers 25, 1 through 8, please. Numbers chapter 25, verse 1. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Mm -hmm. And they called the people unto, their sacri unto, unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto, unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Verse 4, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people, and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. Verse 6, And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses. So you got to remember, in this idolatrous feast, they were reveling. This is why they were bowing. Because you'll just read the top and go, all they did was eat and bow down to their gods. No, it's more than that. That's why this guy, what verse was that? Verse 6. Verse 6, this guy brings in a Midianitish woman. Why? Because they were having sex during their revelings. Go ahead. And, this, and, th and unto his brethren, a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of 
of the tabernacle of the congregation. Read. And when uh, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. Verse 8. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. Because she was on her back. Go ahead. So the plague. And he was on top. Go ahead. So the you got to imagine it. Go ahead. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. From there, let's go to 2 Maccabees 6, verse 4. Second Maccabees chapter 6, verse 4. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles. Oh, the temple was filled with riot and revelings by the Gentiles. Go ahead. Who dallied with harlots. Who dallied with harlots. That's what reveling, reveling goes into partying. When you party, there's a recipe for your parties. Keep it hot and have a lot of alcohol so that the women will lower their inhibitions. Read it again. Verse 4, for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. So that's an example of revelings. Let's go back to Galatians now. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Watch this. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul says, if you do those, do what things? Break these laws that I just gave you, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's a grievous mistake on this part of Christians to think Paul did not teach us to keep the commandments. That's a grievous error. Does everybody see that so far? Okay, okay. From there, from there, give me 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. The law is not made for righteous people. Go ahead. But for the lawless. Ah, but the law is made for lawless people. Let's see if this fits blacks and Latinos. Go ahead and everybody else. Go ahead. And disobedient. And disobedient. For the ungodly. For the ungodly. And for sinners. And for sinners. First off, let's find out what that means. Give me that first, John. Three and four. What is sinner? See, that's why when y'all on the street teaching and people say stupid things, you got to pause at certain key words and hit the precept for it. Go ahead. First John chapter three, verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And Christians are good for saying, I'm a sinner saved by grace. What do you mean by sin? I don't know. Then shut the hell up then. First Timothy 1 and 9 again. I'm sorry. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. For unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. Murderers of fathers, murderer. Give me that in Exodus 21, 15 and 17 about murder. For murderers. Exodus chapter 21, verse 15. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. If you so much as hit your mother, hit your father, God says you shall surely be put to death. Christian churches ain't teaching this. Paul is teaching this. What verse was that? That was the bottom of nine. Read it again. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and and profane for murderers of fathers, murderers and, of fathers, and murderers of mothers, and murderers of mothers. Go ahead. For manslayers, manslayers. That goes back to Exodus twenty and thirteen about killing. Verse read on. Verse ten. 
For whoremongers. For whoremongers. Write this down for whoremongers. Leviticus 19.29. We read that earlier today too. Read. For them that defile themselves with mankind. For them that defile themselves with mankind. It goes into homosexuality. Get that in Deuteronomy 23.17. That goes for male or female. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, Mm -hmm. nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Let's go on back to uh, Timothy now. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. Read. For whoremongers, Mm -hmm. for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers. Men stealers. Deuteronomy 24 verse 7, please. Men stealers goes into kidnapping. And in case you brothers didn't know it, you know when you argue with your wife, if you take your wife and you move her someplace and don't allow her to uh, go about freely, Esau puts that under kidnapping, in case you didn't know. If you lock in a room, Esau puts that under kidnapping. Brothers, I didn't kidnap the, the hoe. Yeah, yeah, but you did, Blanche. But you did. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 7. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel... And maketh merchandise of him. You ever see brothers like in Atlanta out here? Where they be stealing, snatching young girls off the street, putting them back in a van, and bringing them to like Mexico or something, making them whores on the street. They're going to get, here's the law, read the law again. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die. That thief shall die. Die. That's God's judgment for kidnapping. Was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. And thou shalt put evil away from among you. That's how you put evil away. Okay, let's go on back to Timothy. Chapter 1, and what verse we at? 10. 10, yes, sir. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars. For liars. That's Exodus 20, 16. We read that? No, we didn't. Give me that in Exodus 20, 16. Did we read that? Let me hear it. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Mm -hmm. So that's lying. Go on back now. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured person. Perjured person. Pers- that goes under perjury. Go to Exodus 23 and 1. The perjury laws. Did it, did it tell a, swear to tell the whole truth, number two, so help you God. I affirm. Then you sit and tell a bold faced lie. That's perjury. Read that. Exodus chapter 23, verse 1. I didn't want to get my mama in trouble. Well, you just perjured yourself. Read that. Thou shalt not raise a false report. You shall not raise a false report. Go ahead. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Don't be an unrighteous. That's perjury. You want to be an unrighteous, you want to lie in court. That's called perjury. It's going back now. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. Mm -hmm. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. See that? If there be any other thing which is contrary to sound doctrine. Give me that for doctrine. Is it Proverbs 4? I forgot. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. For I give you good doctrine. I give you good doctrine. What is doctrine? The law. Read. Will you read? Yes, sir. Forsake ye not my law. Forsake ye not my law. That is the doctrine. So what is Paul talking about? The law. The law. The law. Read it again. 1 Timothy 1 and 10, please. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. If there be any other thing, meaning what? There might be something Paul said, I left out. But so that means what? That means what? Now, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to see who's thinking. 
If there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, where did we read that in the book of Acts based on what we just read? If there be any other thing that I might have left out, that was in the book of Acts. I don't see any hands. Okay. Put a camera on him. What the camera's on me for? That's this is me. Yeah, this is me. Good. What did it say? Let me hear. Uh huh. Okay. Put the camera back on him. I want the verse. Read it for us, Elkanah. Come on. I want that way. I know you know what you're talking about. Give him a mic. I want, I want, all I want is verse. Acts uh, 15 and 21. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Very good. Very good. All praise. So you, you paying attention, bro. You all right. Oklahoma did do something right with you. All praises. So back to 1 Timothy 1 and 10 again. So I want y'all to see the correlation. Mm -hmm. For 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Read. According to the glorious gospel. Stop. The law is according to the gospel. How come you never heard about that in church? Read verse 11 again. Verse 11. According to the glorious gospel. I got to say it again. The law is according to the glorious gospel. So when you hear Christians say in the gospel, you don't got to keep the law. That's a, they're lying to you. The law is according to the gospel. Read again verse 11. Verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So now, see that? Which was committed to my trust. So, Elisha. Put up on a screen, I want the treaty on geography. What about Christianity today? Put the cover of the book up. And I want you to go to page. Just put it. You, see the, you can see the title of Nehemiah? Yes, sir. Physical Geography. A treaty Phys on physical geography by A. Barrington. The year published was, look at the very bottom, 18, what's that say? 1850. 1850. Um, do me a favor, Alicia. I want page 331. We're still talking about Christianity. So what we've seen thus far, Christians of today are not following anything the Christians of the Bible practiced and preached. Netramai, that's what I want. I want you to read the underline. Rome received the intellectual treasures of Greece, added to the store, exhibited a new phase of law government and public policy, and spread civilization to the Atlantic Ocean. So that's what Rome and Greece did. Go ahead. Along which it spread from Gibraltar. That's Spain, area around the Rock of Gibraltar. Go ahead. To the Norwegian snows. From Gibraltar to the Norwegian snows. Go ahead. In the meantime, immense changes had taken place to alter the whole face of civilized society. Now notice that. In the meantime, immense changes had taken place to alter, that means change, the whole face of civilized society. Read. A new religion had appeared. A new religion had appeared. Go ahead. Differing in many of its doctrines. And this religion differed in many of its doctrines. And precepts. And precepts. From all those who had previously prevailed among the nations. Uh-huh. It made new revelations. It made of, new revelations. Of the creator. Of God. Of man's nature. Meaning what? They created a new God in the earth, and they taught about a new of man's newness of man's nature, duties, uh -huh. and destination, and laid down new rules for his conduct. And laid down new rules for conduct. I wonder what this is talking about. This is talking about the new Christian religion of today. That's what it's going. Let me give you an example of that. Give me First Timothy four one to three, please. This is the. The exalting of the Roman Catholic Church. 
And it's not the Roman Catholic Church that people talk. Constantine Momacmo. Mm, it started there. But its fulfillment was during the 1400s. When they, when they said, you know what? We don't like the way God looks. We want to alter that. We don't like these laws. We want to alter that too. But what we will take from Constantine, we're going to keep that Sunday practice. We're going to keep the immaculate conception line. We will take that. And watch this. Read that. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Now Paul is going to prophesy about the new religion. Go ahead. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed to seducing spirits, seducing pastors, seducing reverends. Go ahead. And doctrines of S devils. Seducing priests and doctrines of devils. So what is this talking about? Christianity is a doctrines of devils. Whether you call it Catholic or not. Oh, no. We're not Catholic. We're Protestant. We, uh, we protested against the Catholic Church. We don't follow the Pope. But you took all the things under the Pope with you except him. Read. Verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Meaning you got the Bible in your hand and you taught a new religion. You said, oh no. You don't got to keep no commandments in Jesus. Read. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Read. Forbidding to marry. It's going to stipulate the new religion. This religion forbids men to marry. That's Roman Catholicism. Go ahead. And commanding to abstain from meat. Because on Lent, they say you cannot eat meat. That's what they do. Go ahead. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So Paul said you got to eat for those who believe and know the law. Give me, I mean, know the truth. Psalms 119 verse 142, please. For those that believe and know the truth. This is one of the chapters they use to say you can eat whatever you want. Really? Is that what the truth is? Read. Psalm 119, verse 142. Mm -hmm. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So that's what Paul is talking about, the law. For those that believe and know the law. Back to 1 Timothy 4, please. I mean, I'm sorry. Give me um, Matthew 24, verse 4 and 5. We're still discussing the new religion in the earth that was prophesied by not only Paul, but Christ himself. Read Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. He's talking about the absurdance of a new religion in the earth. He said a new religion is going to come cover the face of the whole earth, and they're going to say that they're the Christ. Give me the book, the Bourgeois, please. That's not... Yeah, yeah, put the cover on, on, put that up. The Borgias by Marion Johnson. Let's go inside the book, please. Inside the book, Leonardo da Vinci was hired to paint Caesar Borgia as the new model for Jesus Christ. They said, we don't want that black image. We don't want nothing blacky. I'm going to show you that too. We don't want nothing black. Y'all might think I'm just joking. I'm not joking. We want to get rid of everything black. We want a white God with a white Christ. And these are the sketches he did. T.D. Jakes ain't going to teach you this. Creflo ain't teaching you this. Read that on the highlight. I mean, the side left, Nechemiah. Portrait sketches of Caesar by Leonardo da Vinci. So that Caesar is Caesar Borgias, the second son of Pope Alexander the sixth of Rome. Go ahead. After the fall of Milan and his, his patron Ludov Ludovico, Ludovico Il Moro, Il Moro. Leonardo found em employment with Caesar as his chief engineer. Yeah, he was his artisan. Chief engineer, chief artisan. Go ahead. His main task being to supervise fortification. They fortified new images of God and Christ. Now, now, Go back to the cover of the book, Treaty on Physical Geography. I said they didn't want nothing black. Well, who was black? Uh, go back to the cover of the book. Go back. To, yep, put it back up on the screen. So we're going right back to this book. We're going right back to this book. And I want to go to page 297.
Yeah, raise it up. Let's start there. Now, let me sum it up for you. They talk about black Jews and white Jews in this. The white Jews are converts. That's not our focus. I want you to see the scholars talk about black Jews, the blacks being the Jews. Read. Thus the Jews are a people who have ever, according to the prophecy, dwelt alone. Remember it says come out from among them and be separate. Go ahead. Without intermixing with the nations mm -hmm. to this day. Now this separate race all descended from brown ancestors. This separate race all descended from brown ancestors. Go ahead. For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yohanan, if not darker. So he was, they were dark brown. That's what they're saying. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob were dark brown. Not light skinned it, and definitely not white. Go ahead. Exhibit every shade of color from the black Jews of Malabar. Mm -hmm. Now, just jump down to the next highlight. Again, it, the way I didn't underline it, go into the white Jews. I don't give a damn about them because they're converts. Go ahead. The, Spanish Jew. The Spanish Jew is always dark complexioned. The Spanish Jew is always dark complexioned. The Spanish, because in Spain, that's where we was living. That's where we was ruling. Read. And his hair is uniformly black. Jump down to the next highlight. The various shades of color observable among the Negro or African race tends to the same conclusion. He's saying the Jews is the Negro and the African race. They look the same. Go ahead. Along the coast of Guinea, which is low, marshy, and hot, we find jet black complexion. Because remember, if you remember your history, they took many of those black Jews to Guinea as slaves on the colonies there. That Portugal set up. It says along the coast of Guinea, which is low, marshy, and hot, we find jet black complexions. Read. And this is the very country from which American Negroes have been derived. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see this? This is what the scholars put together. They said them American blacks come from that group of Jews that came from Guinea. A lot of them. So now, now, give me the article, Alicia. No, no. Give me the book that says America being the latest. I want to cover. America being the latest. Y'all pay close attention. Don't tell me I didn't send it. Raise it up. Right there. Yep, put that on the screen. You see that? Read that, uh, uh, Nechemiah. Amer America being the latest and most accurate description of the new world. All right. Go to the next page. I hope I gave it to you. I hope I didn't forget yeah, zoom in on that. We said now, Netshamai, the ones that look like F's are S's. Yes, Inside, they always do. I don't. This is that old English writing. So the, what looks like an F is generally an S. Yes, Go ahead. The Portuguese. No, wait, wait, wait. You know what? I didn't give you the year. This book was the 1800s too. I forgot to take a snapshot. But this book was also the 1800s. Go ahead. The Portuguese that dwelt on this island and formed the. The Netherlanders. The Netherlanders that few live above 50 years there. So few live, few lived above 50 years there because they, it was hard for these white people, those Netherlanders, to live on this particular island he's going to talk about. Go ahead. Yet notwithstanding, the great gain tempted them to tarry several of them having two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. Spain, Portugal has set up uh, sugar colonies on the islands around Africa. That's what they did. So these guys, these Netherlanders, several of them had two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. Go ahead, read. That John III, king of Portugal, sent a colony thither above 200 years before. I'm uh, meaning in the 1400s. Go ahead. Whom though the unwholesome air destroyed. That's why the Netherlanders were dying there. Go ahead, because they couldn't deal with the air. Go ahead. It yes, was so that, hot. Go ahead. Yet the place was not left desolate. Read. For he sent new inhabitants who first settled in Guinea, next Angola. So Guinea was settled first, then Angola by the Portuguese. And lastly, on the island St. Thomas. The island St. Thomas, that's another island on the shores of Africa, the west coast of Africa. Go ahead. That so they might be the better used to the so air. So they put colonies there so that they could be better used to the air because it was so daggone hot. Go ahead. That the said king sold all 
those Jews for slaves. You see this? This is what I'm showing y'all. That the said king sold all those Jews for slaves. What Jews for slaves? The ones from Guinea, Angola, and the island of St. Thomas. They called them Jews and they were sold for slaves. Go ahead. That refused to embrace the Roman religion. Wait, stop right there. What was our crime? We refused to accept this new form of Christianity. This new religion. The Roman religion of Christianity. That's what Christ warned us about. That's what Paul was warning us about. And this is why we was going into slavery. Read that part again. That said king. That said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion and caused their children to be baptized. They forced the chil their children to be baptized. They made our kids slaves in Portugal and Spain and sent the parents as slaves in these islands. That's what they were doing to us. This is taking place. I'm going to show the years talking about. Go ahead. From whom coming thither in great numbers. They sent hundreds of thousands of us as slaves. Go ahead. Most of the present inhabitants were descended. Right. Now, from there, uh, Elisha, I want to article on Pope Nicholas V. Pope Nicholas V. And I want to jump down where it says notably treated. Pope Nicholas, wait, go back to the title. Go back to the title. Can we put it on the screen, please? Why is it not on the screen? Read Pope, that, please. Pope Nicholas V and the Portuguese slave trade. So we've been reading about the Portuguese thus far. But now we're going to stipulate Pope Nicholas V. Raise it up. I want to get to the part that says, notably the treatment of Gentiles. Notably the treatment. Okay, right there. Do you see that, Netramon? Can yes, you highlight sir. that, yes. uh, Alicia? I see it, sir. I want the people at home. This is where we're going to start. Read that right there. But this is Pope damn Nicholas the Fifth. Go ahead. Notably, the treatment of black Gentiles was addressed in 1452 and 1455 when Pope Nicholas the Fifth issued a series of papal bulls. Papal bulls are like executive orders. Go ahead that granted Portugal the right to enslave sub-Saharan Africans. So he's the one that instituted the slave trade, Pope Nicholas V, under the Roman Catholic Church. Christians, you are a bunch of dummies following that garbage. You better come out from among us. Read it again. Notably, the treatment of black Gentiles was addressed in 1452 and 1455. When Pope Nicholas V issued a series of... But what I want you to do, notably the treatment of black Gentiles. Why did they call us black Gentiles? Because we rejected that damnable form of Christianity. We didn't want no white Jesus. We didn't want no white God. We didn't want Christmas and Easter and none of that garbage. So they made us slaves. They said enslave all those Jews that reject us. Now some of us was coons and accepted it. But there was a large portion of us that did not. Read it again. Notably. Notably, the treatment of black... Wait, wait, let me look at something. Read the sentence before that. Legal and philo philosophical. Start from there. Yes. Legal and philosophical arguments to address... Be began to evolve during the second half of the 15th century. That's the like 1450, around there. Four that's why when you look at some of the slaves, it was 1441. Go ahead, that's what it's talking about. Go ahead. Once Portuguese mariners began to return to Iberia, Iberia. That's Spain and Portugal. Go ahead. With captives acquired in West Africa. With captives acquired in West Africa. And West Central Africa. And West Central Africa, that's like the Congo. Notably, the treatment of black Gentiles. They called us black Gentiles. Now remember, in the other books, they said they sent the Jews over there. Go ahead was addressed in 1452 and 1455 when Pope Nicholas V issued a series of papal bulls that granted Portugal the right to enslave the right to enslave sub-Saharan Africans. Church leaders argued that slavery served as a natural deterrent and Christianizing influence to barbarous behavior among pagans. You see how they justified it? We were, they said, oh, they're pagans because we're not following white Jesus. That's what they did. They're not following Christmas. They're not following Easter. These are pagans. These are Gentiles. 
That's why they changed all of our names. And I got other books that show they changed our identities. Go ahead. Using this logic, the Pope issued a mandate to the Portuguese king, Alfonso V, and instructed him. So stop right there. Let's get to the Bible now, Revelation 13. Let's read the prophecy about what we just read. With the uprise of, you had Rome, Spain, and Portugal. Rome and Iberia. I'm almost done. You Christians are a bunch of idiots. All of, all of us was idiots in that garbage. But thank the Lord he woke us up. Aren't you happy? Aren't you glad? Let's get a Lord a hand for that. All praises. Revelation 13. We're going to start at verse 5. We're not going to read everything. We, got, we did classes on this before. We're just going to read 5 through 8. Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. This is the white man. He rose up and spoke great things and blasphemy. Like what? Like God is a white man. Jesus is white. The Jews are white. That's what the angels of heaven are white. And you black, you Jews, you're no longer Jews. You're Gentiles. You are sub-Saharan Sub Africans. You are Gentiles. That's what you are. Read. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. 350 years. Come on. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. That's what I was just explaining again. Go ahead. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Everybody's white. And the Pope is God manifest on earth. He's Christ. What was the word? Vicar? Vicar. Vicar. Christ vicar. Meaning Christ's uh, replacement or substitute on the earth. It's Antiochus epiphanies all over again. Read. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Uh-huh. Go and, ahead. And to overcome them. They overcame us, the saints, because we are the saints. Read the precept, please. I know there's somebody new. There's a Christian sitting here. I know. Anybody that's a saint that believes in white Jesus, I'll shut the hell up. Psalms, was a 148? Yeah. Psalms chapter 148, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. So the only saints are the children of Israel. So when we go back to Revelation 13, verse 7, let's look and see what the white man did when he rose up as Rome under the Pope, followed with Spain and Portugal. Verse 7. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. The Israelites. And to overcome them. He overcame us in, in, and enslaved us when he overcame us. That's what we were just reading about. Go ahead. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. In fact, they had Christianity go throughout the earth with this white Jesus garbage. Go ahead. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. That's the proof. It's talking about white Jesus. Who are they worshiping? That white image of Christ. That's what this is taught. Read it again, verse 8. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life. Whose of, names are not written in the book of life. Of Go the ahead. lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Go ahead. Verse 9. If any man have an ear. If you have understanding. Let him hear. You listen good to the judgment of this. Read. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Why? Because of verse 7. Read verse 7 because I know you forgot already. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. They killed us and enslaved us. That's why verse 10, Christ is given the judgment for what they did to the saints. Read. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is the patience and faith in the saints. Sure, yes, they made war against us and overcame us and enslaved us. But we got to patiently wait for the judgment to come. Revelation 18, 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. And that ye receive not of her plague. What is it he wants us to take part in? Their sins. Like what? 
like their religious sins of Christmas and New Year's Eve and Mother's Day and Father's Day and Baby Day and Dog Day and Cat Damn Day. The hell is this? He said, come out from among them. He don't want us in their religions. He don't want us in their political system at all. Read that again. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Mm, so from there, Revelation 14, 12. Revelation. We're going to seal the deal with the last book of the Bible regarding whether or not we must keep the commandments. Read. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. The saints of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Here are they that keep the commandments of God like Paul taught us, like Christ taught us, and the faith of Jesus. Revelation twenty two fourteen, please. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Read it again. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Read it again. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Read. That they may have right to the tree of that life. That they may have right to immortality. When you read Sirach 19, verse 19, y'all can write that down. Read it. Just read it for us in case I know somebody's. What do you mean by the tree of life? What you talking about? Read that. Sirach 19, 19. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. See that? The fruit of the tree of immortality. Back to Revelation twenty-two fourteen, 14, please. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. Mm-hmm. And may enter in through the gates into the city. The only way you enter in the city of the kingdom of heaven you must be doing the commandments. I hope everybody understand that. Now that's different than the, the guy that, 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 that repented the last minute, but don't think you're that guy. That's for another lesson another day. But in case you don't want to keep the commandments and you want to be outside the city, read verse 15. Verse 15. For without our dogs, Creflo Dollar, and sorcerers, T.D. Jakes, and whoremongers, Jamal Warner Bryant, and murderers, Joe Juanita Bynum, and idolaters, and the urban apologetics, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, and all Christendom and Muslims. That's them. That's what the Bible's called. You don't want to keep the commandments? You're a dog. You're a sorcerer. You're an idolater. Stay outside the kingdom of heaven. And with that, brothers and sisters, I say shalom. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 